Yep. Hi, my name is Kerry Haynes. I'm the owner of Taipan XP. Basically, what we do is performance upgrades with diesels. We're commonly known to do our upgrades just through the exhaust system, but we go a lot further into it, more depth, uh, finding out how we can make the car achieve better power and obviously help fuel economy for our caravan towers. We're doing an upgrade at the moment on the 70 series, a fairly new truck with only about 5,000 k's on it. We dynoed it yesterday, and on that particular dyno run, we actually just got the snorkel the top. When we did this, we increased the power at the rear wheels just by taking the standard factory top off, and on the dyno and a fourth gear, what we call a fourth gear run, it achieved 5 kilowatts just by lifting the standard top off. The reason being is this snorkel top was designed, came out on the 75 series, six cylinder, normally aspirated, must be 20 years ago. It doesn't need anywhere near the amount of air that this V8 turbo diesel engine requires. Hence, when we lifted this off, that's why particular vehicle made so much more power because it would get some air into the engine. So always air in, exhaust gas out is the best formula to get a power upgrade whether it's a diesel or a petrol vehicle. Obviously when we took this top off we were still running the standard system. So that 5 kilowatts is still going through small exhaust system. When we put this three inch system on and can get more air out, we would get more improvement again. So, the first procedure we recommend is to get the snot the top off. We contribute the big oil consumption problem that this engine has to a starting for air. You'll notice when you're driving the vehicle, window down you hear this horrible, annoying, hissing noise. And everyone tells me that's the air getting drawn into the snorkel. It's not, it's the actual air. It's the hissing because it can't draw the air in. A simple test you could do at home is run up the road, watch your rev counter, watch when it gets to three grand and start stalling and it won't pull through that three grand happily. Go back home, undo the two 12 mil bolts, release the top by pulling it out, do them back up, and do that same run again, and you'll see a huge difference in the way the vehicle performs. Vehicles that we've done in the early stages, like this particular vehicle with 5,000 k's on, this vehicle, when we dipped it, the oil level's down. So consequently, getting onto it in the early stages is going to help tremendously in reducing the fuel, uh, sorry, the oil consumption. So, so the sooner you can get a snorkel top on so there's some air into it, the faster the improvement will be on your oil consumption. Choices are this brand new snorkel top is a lot sleeper, a lot lower, okay? That's one option you've got. It's not my preferred option, but it's definitely better than that standard option there. What I do like is the more open, more upright. This particular one is very small top. It's the new one, new improved design where it's actually all streamlined, it's not so boxy in the back, so obviously that helps with the airflow. We do an adapter, so you can just lift that off, slide that in its place, put the snorkel top on, bring it down to the bottom, clamp it on, and you'll be away laughing. So consequently more air in, with everything we're doing, will improve fuel economy, and obviously help with that oil consumption problem we think is occurring.
security because of the lack of air getting into the engine. Okay, so while we've been on and talking about the snorkel top, the other component with obviously getting the air into the actual vehicle is air cleaners. And you hear a lot of to and throwing about air cleaners, whether you use an aftermarket one or whether not to use an aftermarket one. We do suggest to use an aftermarket air filter, but we suggest to use it in the right uh, climate and conditions. Now obviously 90% of our customers are four wheel drive, using their four wheel drive to tow their caravan. So when you're on bitumen, we don't see any problem in using the k and filter. What we do suggest though, is if you do use the k and filter, you actually read the fitting instructions and the cleaning instructions. And obviously, if you look after the cleaner, your air filter, use the recommended cleaning products, this filter has a lifetime warranty, okay? So, on bitumen, and used in the correct method, we don't have any problems with it. But if you go off-road into bull dust and sand and beach, and doing beach work and that, what we do recommend is you definitely stay with the Toyota filter, for safety's sake. So, those are two conditions that we recommend using an air filter. If you don't keep that air filter clean and maintained, you're going to, and it starts blocking up, you're going to do what the snorkel top effectively is doing, not letting any air in, and then you're going to create performance problems and fuel problems. Your consumption will be a lot higher because you haven't maintained and filled it. So if you're going to use one, A, use it on the tar seal, no problems at all. Make sure you read the fitting instructions and cleaning instructions and do not over oil it. Moving on from that, what we strongly recommend to use is our oil, what we call our oil air separator. The V8 engine we showed in our earlier segment on how it was breathing and puffing out the smoke. You basically your engine fumes, vapors were getting puffed out of the collector and plumbed straight back into your air intake. Anyone can work out that putting hot fumes and vapors in with the cold air that you're trying to create with your snorkel top is making it less efficient. So obviously, if you can keep all that fumes and vapors which turn to oil, heat out of the air box, it's going to help with your performance. Any oil getting in on your intercooler, inside the intercooler, if you feel your intercooler how hot the aluminium gets, when it's sitting around with that heat in there, it's obviously the oil is then starting to line the intercooler and bake on, which then obviously will lessen the efficiency of the actual intercooler. The fumes and vapors, they get onto your airflow meter, combined with a little bit of dust, then you start having problems with fuel economy, making no boost. So consequently, that's why we like to see the can used, okay? It has a side screen on it. Later on, we'll show you how we actually mount it up on the car, where it sits, how to maintain it, how to empty it. So that's a strong recommendation that we uh, suggest that you use. The chip that we actually use is a little bit more, or actually quite a bit better than some of the products around. And you, you see there's nowhere you can get in and tamper with it. The only way this can be tampered with is with the right tool, which is a laptop. It runs a 3D map. It's very complex and we'll get into that a little bit more in another segment that we're going to do. But this one here, this all has to be laptop um, programmed and also the laptop to be used to actually fine tune. This particular one runs off rail pressure and has another cable that goes to the map sensor 
again, that helps with boost, when to bring boost along. So we'll get into that with more detail um, on another segment we're going to do after we finish this one. On the exhaust system, our exhaust system comes with quite an extensive fitting instructions, two pages. Again, it's a good idea to read them before you start the job to help make it easier for installation. Also, each kit that we send out comes with gaskets, nuts, bolts, and new engine mounting block. Sorry, exhaust mounting blocks. So, consequently, you'll see when you go to fit up your system, your standard system, it basically is a 409, the lowest grade stainless, as you can see how it's all showing rust and, and tarnishing and that. The, the actual system is still a, a low grade stainless and actually moves around on the vehicle. So it pushes, it pulls when it heats up and detracts when it cools down. So consequently the, the rubber blocks get all pulled out of shape. If you try and use those rubber blocks when you mount our new system, it can throw the whole system out when you're trying to line it up on a vehicle. So the, the new blocks are supplied so that it will sit in the original position and then it will move around, yes, but it's basically then not going to get itself out of whack. The exhaust 